In the future, a giant spaceship known as Achilles is heading just outside of Mars to investigate a strange spherical object that appeared out of nowhere. The crew of this ship consists of six members who have been hibernating for eight whole months. The main protagonist, Carla, is the first one to wake up among them. But before she became an astronaut, she had lost her mother and daughter to a tragic car crash. Soon, other crew members also wake up and are immediately requested at the command deck. While making her way there, Carla encounters a bald man named Sai who is still rattled by the hibernation process. Having experienced the same feeling before, she advises him to get some rest. Later on, two of the crew members, Tez and Walsh, talk about Sai. Tez tells Walsh that Sai is actually a blogger with many followers back on Earth but Walsh is unimpressed by this. Tez then tries to make small talk with the bald man, but he does not want conversations with her. At the time of the crew's awakening, there are only eight hours left before finally reaching the strange sphere. Carla and the commander, Sen, attempt to know anything about the strange sphere by scanning it, but cannot find anything significant. Because there is nothing there, Carla tells Sen that they should head back to Earth but the commander insists that they continue their mission of investigating the sphere. For this reason, they consult the CEO of the expedition program, Vance, who appears through a hologram machine. Vance tells the crew that they should continue exploring the mysterious dark sphere to learn and identify what it is. He tells them that this is the greatest mystery yet of mankind. As such, people back on Earth are excitedly waiting to know its true nature. A while later, Carla hears the telepathic voice of her dead mother calling her name. The bald man, in a separate room, also starts to hear some voices. When she arrives at her room, Vance suddenly calls her via video call. He is worried about her because she looks tense with the mission, but Carla just shrugs this off. All of a sudden, the communication between them is cut off. The ship's AI informs them that there has been an anomaly caused by the sphere. The strange sphere suddenly elicits a bright beam of light that shines toward the ship. Due to this anomaly, the system and communication of Achilles have been compromised. As the ship goes closer and closer to the dark sphere, the crew members gather again at the command deck. There, Carla notices new and bizarre information about their object. She shares with the crew that the sphere is repeatedly transmitting a single word, Deus, which means God in Latin. As they approach it, the terrified Psy tells them that they have to turn back. But no one listens to him, so he leaves the command deck due to his fear. Carla shares this sentiment and tells the commander that they have to at least stop until communications with Vance are restored. However, Sen insists that the mission continue because that is their last order from the CEO. He argues that it must be God contacting them, which Carla finds absurd because she thinks it must be a hostile alien. Later, she finds Sai in the corridor and he seems very frantic. The bald man tells her that it is judgment day for them because he can also hear voices in his head and that these voices are screaming the word judgment at him. Afterward, the crew members discuss this godlight that they have just encountered. Carla tells them that it is not God, but rather an extraterrestrial life form that they have to examine. One of the crew members, Ulf, tells her that if it is indeed an alien, then they will find a way to blow it up. It is at this point that Carla hears another telepathic voice, but this time it is the voice of her dead daughter. Sai is also having a hard time on his own due to hearing his own version of the voices. For this reason, Carla is put in her room by Ulf and Tez so that she can rest. Tez then informs her that she and Ulf will look for Sai in the cargo bay. Carla also wants to search for the bald man because she is worried about him. Even though she needs to rest, Ulf lets her come with him. The two decide to split up so they can find him much quicker. Meanwhile, Tez eventually encounters Sai after searching for him hard enough. The poor bald man is haunted by the voices in his head. As a result of this, he is gruesomely scarring his own body with occult symbols. Seeing this, Tez screams loudly for Carla and Ulf to hear. When Carla arrives, it is already too late for Tez because she is already dead with her guts ripped out. 
Seeing Carla, Sai instantly grabs her and takes her hostage. Ulf later sees the two of them as he is approaching the cargo bay. Sai tells them that they should turn the ship around because they will simply die if they go ahead. He also suggests that they kill the commander because he thinks Sen is hiding something. Suddenly, Sen appears with a gun and fires at Sai's head, killing him. The commander then orders Ulf to get two body bags, each for Tez and Sai. After that, the commander assists Carla back to her room. While they are inside the transit heading there, she asks the commander if he knows anything and he replies that he has no idea. Sensing that she seems to be backing out, the commander aggressively tells her to continue the mission of investigating the sphere. Upon getting to Carla's room, she lashes out at the commander's nonchalance regarding the two crew members' death. At that point, there are only three hours left before they arrive at the strange sphere. Because Achilles is too big, the crew proceeds to the dark sphere through a small spacecraft. While heading there, Carla notices a strange structure on the sphere, but she cannot identify what it is. Just then, the communication with Earth has been restored prompting Vance to call the crew immediately. There, he informs them that the unidentified structure that Carla had seen earlier has also appeared back on Earth, and they are thousands in number. Vance ends his call by saying that scientists back on Earth have concluded that the strange sphere might provide them with the answers they need. As such, the crew members have to continue their investigation. Initially, Ulf and Carla will be the ones to go to the sphere. But Walsh volunteers to come with them, and Carla agrees because they also need a scientist to examine it. For this reason, the three of them head out to the surface of the sphere while the commander is left behind to observe their investigation. Upon walking towards the strange structure that they have seen earlier, they see that it is actually a gate and that there is also a bright light emanating from inside of it. While slowly walking towards the gate, Ulf fires a flare gun to illuminate the top of the gate. There, they see a symbol that the scientist Walsh quickly recognizes, the event horizon. They then hear a strange sound. The commander informs them that this sound is being relayed to them by the ship's AI, and it simply means welcome. All of a sudden, a figure of an illuminated woman is seen inside the bright gate. The woman does not speak directly to them, opting instead to telepathically deliver her message. She is communicating to them using the AI's translation, telling them that she is speaking for the creator of everything that has ever existed. Carla asks why the creator has come, and the woman answers that it is to both help and warn the people of Earth. The illuminated woman goes on to explain that mankind has been given two choices. On one hand, people can enter the gates and they will never suffer anymore. On the other hand, if they choose not to enter, the sphere will soon arrive and destroy Earth by turning it into a black hole. Furthermore, Carla will have to be the one to lead the people to the gate. The woman then transforms into Carla's mother. Seeing her dead mother again, Carla cautiously approaches the gate. On the other side of the gate, she sees her daughter happily running towards her and behind her is a great golden city. But before she can reunite with her dear daughter, the vision suddenly stops. Carla then violently wakes up on top of a table inside the spaceship, now wearing white clothes. After shaking madly for a while from being sick, she asks why she is suddenly there at the table. Ulf answers that when she came out of the gate earlier, she passed out immediately so he helped her go back to the ship. However, Walsh did not survive. Vance calls Carla to ask what is on the other side of the gate. Still shaken, she explains that it is like a beautiful and golden Jerusalem. Vance pressures her to tell more, but Carla replies that aside from the wondrous city, she saw nothing else. After the call, she realizes the gravity of Walsh's sudden death. She wonders why Walsh died since he was an experienced explorer. Ulf replies that Walsh had simply made a mistake with his spacesuit that unluckily led to his demise. Upon hearing this, Carla is reduced to tears because it is her that asked Walsh to come with them. Ulf then tells her to get some rest and that they are also leaving the orbit of the strange sphere. However, she wants to stay longer to get some answers. 
While walking towards the command deck, Ulf stops Carla in a specific corridor where the cameras cannot reach. He asks what she has really seen inside the gate, and Carla confides in him that she saw her mother and daughter inside. She is sure that Vance and the commander are hiding something due to the way they are pressuring her about the information regarding the gate. Later on, Ulf goes back to the command deck where Sen asks him suspiciously what Carla said to him. Ulf answers that she did not say anything to him. Maintaining his suspicion, the commander orders the ship's movement out of the sphere's orbit. While moving away from the sphere, the AI of the ship announces that they should be back in their hibernation. Carla decides that this is the optimal time to make her move. She visits Walsh's spacesuit to see if anything is wrong with it. Afterward, she infiltrates the commander's room, using her knife to find some files about the crew members. However, this is seen by Sen through the camera and he immediately orders Ulf to stop her. When Ulf is walking in the corridor, Carla points a gun at his head. She tells him that she knows he is a former special forces soldier that specializes in assassinations. Being wary of the danger he poses, she signals him to move back to the command deck. There, she confronts the commander about her discovery. She learns from checking Walsh's perfect suit that he was actually assassinated because there is no defect to be found. At this point, Vance reappears to tell her the information she wants to know. According to him, the scientists back on Earth think she has seen heaven inside the gate. But being an atheist, Carla thinks that this is impossible. Since Carla's journey toward the gate has been broadcasted back to Earth, everyone now wants to escape hellish Earth and head to heaven. He then shows her live footage of Earth, where everyone is clamoring toward the alien gates that have also appeared there. Carla is shocked by the footage, allowing Sen to charge at her while she is distracted. During the ensuing scuffle, Carla accidentally fires her pistol before pushing Sen away from her. The commander then taunts her that there is nothing she can do, and she finishes him off with just one shot to the chest. However, Carla realizes that the accidental pistol fire before has actually hit her on the waist, but despite being weakened by the wound, she points the gun toward Ulf. He tells her that he does not want to kill her because he also wants to know the truth about everything that is currently happening. Carla chooses to believe him, and Ulf helps her to treat her flesh wound. She tells him that she wants to go back to the sphere to destroy it before it can reach Earth and turn into a black hole. Ulf comes up with a good idea that they can use a bomb to destroy it, and this can be done by firing it from the cargo. With both of them agreeing with the plan, the two execute this immediately. While Ulf goes to where the bomb is located, which is at the other end of the gigantic spaceship, Carla quickly heads back to the command deck. There, she talks to Vance and confronts him about the truth regarding the sphere. Vance finally admits to her that there is no god on it and that he actually invented the planet-like sphere. He explains that since the human population is too many for Earth to sustain, at least 15 billion people should be eliminated to save the remaining 6 billion. He adds that the sphere cannot actually destroy the planet and that it is one big lie to fool the people into rushing toward the gates to paradise where they will just simply die. With that answered, she asks why she can sometimes see or hear her dead mother and daughter. It turns out that Vance has planted a chip in her head after the car accident, which was caused by Vance actually. He wanted to control and train her into the woman she is right now. Hearing this heartbreaking revelation, Carla tells Vance that if her mother was still here, she would tell him a story. The story is about five men stuck on a boat with resources enough for only three people, so two people must necessarily be killed. Vance agrees with this, but Carla tells him that her mother has a different ending in mind. In fact, to make all of them survive, the five men can fish, find an island, or even wait for a ship. Her main point is that everyone deserves a fighting chance at life because no one knows what will happen in the future. At this point, Ulf has already prepared the bomb to be used but Vance is a smart man. Upon realizing the two's plan, he immediately commences the self-destruction of Achilles, giving Carla just three minutes to consider whether to help him or not. Still, she is resolute in not wanting to help him and shoots the hologram machine to forcibly finish the call with Vance. After ending the call, Carla quickly informs Ulf that he needs to move back to the main ship before the explosion happens. Ulf tells her that if he goes back to the main ship with the bomb, there is no way he can fire it towards the sphere. But he moves back to the main ship anyway due to hearing the self-destruct sequence. 
While moving toward Achilles, Ulf tells her to manually override the ship to separate the main ship from its heavy and gigantic cargo. After giving Carla the code, Ulf waits for the transit to bring him back to the main ship, but it is very slow moving. Eventually, the self-destruction timer winds down to zero while Ulf is still traveling inside the transit. He cynically thinks that he will not make it in time. As everything explodes, Carla has no choice but to separate Achilles' main ship from its gigantic cargo. Fortunately, Ulf has managed to cross into the main ship just in time before the separation, surviving the ordeal. After the near-death experience, the two drink together while waiting to come close to the sphere. Ulf informs her that they now have no way of detonating the bomb from a distance so they have to do it manually by going to the sphere. The two later arrive back at the sphere to plant the bomb. As they prepare to go outside, Ulf tells her to wait because he will go first. After going out, Ulf suddenly closes the door behind him. He wants to save Carla because someone needs to tell people on Earth the story of what happened here. The tearful Carla asks him to go back inside, but he has already made up his mind at this point. He then tells her that she must make it back to Earth. Due to Ulf's fatal decision, Carla is instantly reduced to tears the moment that she leaves the ship. But not wanting to waste her friend's sacrifice, Carla drives the ship away from the sphere. Afterward, the sphere finally explodes in a rather beautiful yet somber way. As the ship drifts into the vast nothingness of space, Carla tells the AI to shut up because she is fed up with it. Although the movie is not as exciting as other science fiction movies out there, it definitely has a message that may resonate with its viewers, and that is the ethical dilemma regarding overpopulation. Though noble at first glance, the presented solution is nothing more but unnecessary evil in that it treats human life as a mere statistic to reduce. There will actually be no scarcity of resources if each resource is managed properly instead of being overused for profit. Ultimately, the movie manages to show that men like Vance only want to become God among the people. 